Okay, the last lesson was a long one, so I'm going to keep this one short. This is 7.3 Half-Life. And Half-Life, well, you might have heard of a video game called Half-Life. That's not what we're talking about in this lesson. Half-Life is the average time for half of a radioactive substance to decay. So we've been talking about our radioactive substances in the last lesson, and this is about how long it takes for it to decay. Now we talk about how long it takes half of the substance to decay instead of saying the whole thing, because there is no answer to how long the whole thing takes. The way this stuff decays is that if you have one kilogram of it, and you wait for, let's say the half-life of this substance is 10 days. So if I have one kilogram, I wait 10 days, then it's down to 500 grams. The other 500 grams have decayed into something else. Okay, cool. If I wait another 10 days, then half of that 500 grams has decayed. Now it's down to 250. And another 10 days, it'll be divided by, by 2 again. It'll be down to 125. And another 10 days down to... Seven, um, not 75, but um, 62.5. You get the idea. You keep on dividing by 2 each time. And so you can imagine then, there's no way to actually get rid of all of it. It's going to keep on dividing in, into 2 and 2 and 2 forever. So that's how the half-life works. It's this exponential relationship. And I'm actually going to draw that here. Our rate of decay is this exponential relationship where it starts off... Um, I mean, the more you have, the more decays. It's always half of it will decay in a certain amount of time, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so that's um, our rate of decay. It's, it's exponential. So the larger, or the, yeah, it, it sort of slows down. The decay slows down over time. So our equation for this is A equals a naught times one half t to the t over h. Okay, so a couple things here. A is the initial amount. Uh, sorry, no. A is not the initial amount. A is the amount. A is the amount of the substance remaining. Amount remaining. A naught, this A sub zero here, this is the initial amount, how much you started with. Okay, T is time, and H is the half life. And that's what we're talking about here. It's the amount of time it takes for half of it to decay. So you can see that if if the half-life is 10 days, and t is 10, 10 days, then 10 over 10 becomes 1, and we have the amount is equal to a naught times 1 half to the exponent 1, so just 1 half. And you can see that if we've gone twice as long, 20 days, 20 divided by 10 will be 2, 1 half squared becomes 1 quarter, so you can see how that sort of works, that equation. All right, we'll try an example here, neon. Neon-19 has a half-life of 17.22 seconds. What mass of Neon-19 will remain from a 100 milligram initial sample after 30 seconds? So, let's see. We have the half-life is 17.22 seconds. Um, T is equal to 30 seconds. We're waiting for 30 seconds. And we have the initial amount, A0, is equal to 100 milligrams. Then we can use our equation, A is equal to A0 times 1 half to the T over H. And we'll fill in our numbers here. I'm going to leave things as milligrams. Usually I recommend putting them into their proper units. In this case it would be kilograms. But if we keep things in milligrams, it's going to work out just fine here. Because then our answer will be in milligrams. Okay, our time is 30. I'm dividing by 17.22. 
And this gives us a final answer of 29.9 or 30 milligrams. There we go. So we started with 100 milligrams. After 30 seconds, we're down to 30 milligrams. Excellent. The next one here is um, we're going to fill out a table. It says a 100 milligram sample of magnesium 27 decays by 7% of its previous mass every minute. We want to determine its half-life and state the half-life decay equation. Okay, so we're saying at time zero we start with 100 milligrams. Cool. Now, after that first minute, we're going to lose 7%. So we're going to have 100 minus 7% of 100. Well, 7% is just 7. 7% of 100. So we get down to 93. Do you see how that works? Okay. So 93 is our new one here. And at the end of that two minutes, or at the end of that, uh, that minute there, we're going to have gone down by another 7%. Now I need to figure out how much that is. It's going to be 93 times 0 0.07. This gives us 6.51. So you see I will have gone down by 6.51 this time, not by a full 7. That gives me 86.49. Uh, 86 so I bring this down here, 86.49, and Eighty-six point four nine minus. Well, I'll do the same same calculation, and it gives me now seven percent of that is six point oh five. So our answer is eighty point four four here. And I'm not going to fill out all those details now. I'm just going to f um, do the rest of the table here. So we have eighty point four four, and down another seven percent, seventy-four point five one, or sorry, seventy-four point eight one and then 69.57, 64.70, and each time I'm just doing 7% um, off. Here's 60.17, 55.96, and 48.40. And I'll fill in this last little bit here. At the end of that 10th uh, minute there, 45.01. Okay, so our first column here is the time, uh, the amount at that time. So at time 0, we have 100. At time 10, we have 48.40 left. The question asked us to find the half-life. Okay, so we want to find where did it go down to half of its initial amount. That's how the half-life works. We want to find, it started at 100, where did it get down to 50 milligrams? Well, that happened halfway between time 9 and 10. So I'm going to say that, therefore, our half-life is equal to about 9.5 minutes. And then we can write our equation here. A is equal to A naught, one half, T over 9.5. That's our half-life. That's what the question was asking for, the half-life decay equation. Okay, on the next page, we don't have a whole lot here, just the applications of half-life. And this is um, carbon dating. You might have heard about this on like a TV show or something, how they find out how old all sorts of things are. When you have some um, dinosaur skeletons, you want to find out when they're from, you would use something like this. You'd use your carbon dating. So, um, so the way this works here, carbon-14 decays, uh, well, carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. Okay? We've gone out, scientists have gone out and measured that and figured out that's how long it takes carbon-14 to decay. Now, for comparison, carbon-12 is the normal one. That's the stable one. So, if carbon has six protons and six neutrons, it's stable. Carbon-14 has an extra two neutrons. 
If it has that, then it has a half-life of 5,730 years. So it's a nice long time, but it does decay. Okay, and the equation for that is 614 carbon goes down to 714 nitrogen plus negative 1, 0, E. All right, and from your lesson, the last lesson, 7.2, maybe you remember that this is beta negative decay. So we've got beta negative. Because it's releasing an electron. And in fact, I said, I said that the carbon goes down, but actually it goes up. You'll see that we end up gaining a proton there. What happens is that um, a neutron is converted into a proton and an electron. That's what's happening here is when we have our beta negative decay. So we go up to nitrogen. So that happens every 5,730 years, half of, oops, half of all of our carbon-14 will do that. Now, we have carbon-14 in us right now. If, if you were to look at all the carbon that's, that's in your body, there would be a certain amount of it that is carbon-14. And this is sort of a, a fixed thing. There's um, a certain amount of carbon-14 that's constantly being replenished. We absorb it, so this is the carbon-14. It exists in the CO2 in the atmosphere, and then plants absorb that from the atmosphere. And then the animals eat those plants and absorb the carbon dioxide. The, they absorb the carbon-14 from the plants. And then we go ahead and eat the animals, or maybe we're eating plants as well. Um, and uh, we absorb that carbon-14. And then it's in our, in our body. And we're constantly eating and we're constantly removing waste from our body as well. And so our level of carbon-14 in our bodies is equal to the general level in the whole world. Right? There's, there's sort of a default level of carbon-14 in the whole world, the, the ratio. And so what we have here is a fixed ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in our bodies while we're living. We keep it at this constant level. But the thing is that as soon as we die, as soon as we die, we, start, we stop being in that cycle. We're not absorbing, we're not eating any more food, we're not absorbing any more carbon-14, so that's it. We're not gaining any more carbon-14. As soon as we die, we're buried, and our body is slowly then um, releasing that carbon-14. It is decaying into nitrogen. And so what scientists can do is they can go and they can take a substance, see how much carbon-14 there is compared to how much carbon-12 there is. That tells them how much that carbon-14 has decayed, and that tells them how old that thing has to be, because they know how long it takes for that much to decay. That's how they, they do this. So the application here is that, um, uh, that we can uh, date living objects. Well, I should say they're formally living. Formally, or formerly, they used to be living. By comparing the amount of C14 to the amount of C carbon-12. And that lets them very accurate, well, not very accurately, but it lets them date when something uh, must have been around, when it was living. So it's only useful for dating living things things that were once living. Now, another similar technique is using what's called aluminum-26. And aluminum-26 has a half-life of 720,000 years. And by the way, we've been saying half-life, and I've just been writing it out, but half-life, the physics symbol for it is lambda like this, and again, if you're familiar with a video game called Half-Life, that's the symbol for that video game. 
Okay, so half, um, aluminum 26 has a much longer half-life, 720,000 years. So carbon-14 isn't very useful for things that are that old, because it, sto it stops really giving accurate readings. So aluminum-26 is more useful for older things, and also um, things that aren't necessarily living. So our decay here, we're decaying aluminum into magnesium and a positron. So it's the same sort of uh, decay as before, except instead of beta negative, now it's beta positive. And our application for this is to date really old things, um, especially dating interstellar rocks. Like meteorites. If we want to find out how old this meteorite is, when it left its planet, wh when it was, you know, part of something else, we can use aluminum-26 dating. So that's just an idea of, of where half-life can be pretty useful. All right, that's the end of the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it.